In this video, we're going to take a look at working with render passes in Octane for Maya. And for this video, I'm using the com underscore tower 01 scene. And this consists of the sci-fi structure, HDRI lighting, a volume node, this is a VDB, a little bit of steam here. Uh, and there's an area light down here casting light upwards and an emissive surface inside here casting red light. So it's a pretty simple scene overall. So I'm going to go into the render settings window and under render settings next to passes, I'm going to choose create new to create a new render passes node. This is different from render layers. Render layers allow you to separate different objects in the scene into layers that can be rendered separately and then reassembled in compositing programs. Render passes allow you to separate different elements of the image to be reconstructed and tweaked in a compositing program. So things like reflection and uh, diffuse lighting and uh, ambient occlusion and so on. So let's take a look at this, how this works. So I'll open this up in the attribute editor and let's scroll to the top here. And what we'll see is that we have a preview pass here. So this is currently what's being displayed in our render which is the beauty pass. Below this, we have several folders that have a bunch of different checkboxes. And these allow us to enable which render passes we want to see, as well as which render passes will be uh, output in the final uh, image when you render an image or an image sequence. So let's just turn on a few here. I'm gonna turn on emitters. Uh, let's do diffuse direct and indirect and reflection direct and reflection indirect. and maybe light direction and volume, volume mask. And let's go down to post-processing. Let's turn on the post-process layer. And in the info passes, let's turn on uh, shading normals, Z depth, position, and ambient occlusion. So we'll take a look at how these passes look when in the render view. Of course, there's detailed information on each and every one of these passes in the uh, documentation. So I'm not gonna go over every single one. I'm just gonna kind of show you how the workflow uh, is achieved. So now I'll open up the preview pass menu. Let's set this to emitters. So you can see there's just that emissive red surface there. And that's all we see in the render. If we take a look at diffuse direct, we can see it's very dim. I'm going to turn on the gamma correction so you can actually see the surface. But this is what it looks like. So that's the direct diffuse reflection off the surface. It's mostly a reflective surface, so we're not going to see a whole lot. But if I turn on, if I switch to diffuse indirect, you see a little bit more. Let's turn on our gamma correction again, so there you can see. And then we can take a look at uh, Reflection Direct. It's also fairly dim. But Reflection Indirect is nice and bright. So we can see a lot of those reflections from the light down here, as well as the emissive surface down here. Let's take a look at Light Direction. This is a red, green, and blue shaded image that shows where the light is coming from in the scene. Take a look at Volume. This will render out our VDB as a separate pass. And then we also have a volume mask, which creates like an alpha image of our volume there. You can take a look at Z depth. So Z depth doesn't look terribly impressive. So let's go down to the info passes section here in the render passes node and increase the Z depth max setting. So actually we can bring it up quite a bit and we'll start to see shading on the tower based on its distance from the cameras. And since it's a fairly large scene in terms of dimensions, the Z-depth max setting has to be fairly high. Geometric normals. Shading normals, which is gonna be similar but smoother. We don't see the faceting in the shading normals render. And position. And take a look at uh, ambient occlusion. So the ambient occlusion is, is looking uh, like there's some serious problems going on here. So let's take a look at that. 
First of all, we need to increase the AO distance, just like the Z depth. This is a fairly large scene, so an AO distance of three is not gonna be very helpful. So let's set this up to 50. So we see some shading here, but there's also some artifacting on the surface. And uh, this is telling us that there's something wrong with the scene. Fortunately, this is an easy one to fix. If I go into the render settings and let's go into our kernel. And under, under the top here, let's increase the ray epsilon. Let's set it to one. We can even set it to like 0.1. That will help uh, resolve some of the uh, artifacts that we're seeing on the surface there that might be affecting our render. So you can choose to render out the image, if you're going to do a batch render, as a multi-channel EXR. And that means that all of these different checked render passes that you've activated will be included as extra channels within that single EXR image. If you're rendering out uh, a sequence of images, then each image in the sequence will have the render passes as a separate channel. And you can bring that into your compositing program uh, like Nuke or After Effects, and then tweak them as necessary. If you choose a file format that does not support multi-channels, like PNG or something like that, then you're going to get a separate image for each render pass. Um, so if you're rendering 50 frames and you have 20 render passes activated, then that's going to be 20 times 50 frames. In the uh, render passes node, where we have checked on all of these different uh, render passes, we have the option of changing the default uh, indicator of the render pass. So in other words, if I go down here to passes EXR channel names, I'll expand this. You can see that we have a list here of all the channels available and their default name. So if I render out a multi-channel EXR, I bring the image into say Nuke. Then when I look at each of the different channels, they will be indicated by this prefix right here. If for some reason you want to change this, you want to put your own custom prefix, you just type in a new prefix right there and it will appear in your compositing program. So that's the basics of working with render passes in Octane for Maya.